Three, two, one. Smash Mouth Sports. I'm your host, as always, Preston Bailey. I'm in a very festive mood today. With me, as always, Cam Vieira, unless, of course, the show gets a little too rambunctious. That, there's been a couple of those shows where Cam has uh, has opted out. He's load, he's load managed, and I, and I respect that, and I appreciate that, because uh, the one thing with Smash Mouth Sports is we're not afraid to go into it, but before we go too deep, I want to set the tone here. Yes, you clicked on the right show. I love Tony Dungy. I've always respected Tony Dungy, but I am, when you come for the bull. You're going to get the horns. And I'm telling you right now, I feel very protective of my guy, Tom Brady, because he's been attacked by a lot of people, including his own idiot drunken head coach, Bruce Arians, this year, who's gotten the horns. So, yeah, I feel I need to defend Tom Brady and some of the idiot in the media at ESPN and Fox Sports has came after my guy, Tom Brady. So I'm going to bring up in a minute here, but I've got to get to it because Cam is telling me that he has got some fire that he wants to spend uh, and shoot and, and enlighten people on what is going on. So, uh, Cam, I, what are your thoughts on Tony Dungy? Let's hear it. You tell me you're prepared, you're ready to go here. Let's hear it. Yeah, well, Tony Dungy was on Shannon Sharp, the great tight end, now working at Fox Sports 1's podcast, Club Shay Shay. Um, oh, yeah, Shay Shay. Let's hear this. Go ahead. And he said that he, of all the quarterbacks he's ever played, he thought Tom Brady, he ranked him sixth <laughs> in the hall. Quarterback. I'm fine. Go ahead. I wasn't and, having a heart attack. I'm just that's a nice that's a dagger to the heart, but go ahead. And he put the guys who were mobile ahead of him, guys like John Elway, Aaron Rodgers. Hold on, slow down. I want I want the people to write this down if they're fine. Okay, so I'm gonna write this down with the people here. So John Elway, he said, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Okay. Uh, there were a few more that I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Well, he said Peyton Man. He, well, what's what? Let me say this. It's okay if you don't have them all, but I do. He said he said Steve Young. I remember that guy. So I'm writing him on the list. So he wrote Steve Young. So yeah, Steve Young was fairly athletic for his day. John Elway was fairly athletic for his day. The key word being for his day. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, yes, he's he's great, athletic, and all those things. But before you say what you're about to say, Peyton Manning is on. Peyton Manning. There is statues in your downtown right now, wherever you're watching this from, that look at Peyton Manning and say he is slow. Peyton Manning is a, is a genius. Peyton Manning is a top five quarterback on anybody's board. He's great. I'm not knocking Peyton Manning the slightest. He is a statue. So to say, to Good put, move. and he went a step further and said, well, Peyton Manning is number one on his list, but Peyton Manning's not even a good athlete. So, so go ahead and finish, Cam. I just had to add that for the people. No, I think this is sour grapes from Tony Dungy because Tom Brady got the better of him on so many occasions. Right. And I think this is also a flawed argument coming from the most overrated coach in the NFL of the last 20 years. Whoa! Wow, Cam! Now, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to wait and say like and subscribe until the end of this video so we don't get a bunch of thumbs down here. I feel like there's going to be a lot of thumbs down. Now, Cam, I understand you're disappointed in this comment. I'm disappointed, too. I've got a lot of respect for Tony Dungy. You're free to say whatever you want to. Let's hear it. Do you have anything to back this up, or it's just the way you feel you want to just punch him in the face, give him a good old – let's hear it. Let's, well, why is he the most overrated? Yeah, when it comes to Tony Dungy, he, he, here it is. It, 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 it's simple. Let's just look at look at his career. He's in Tampa for how you you know how long was he there? Five years. Well, I thought you were going to go into it, but I'll go into it. Here we go. You ready? I'm going to bring up his record. You want to say what you got to say before we bring up his record, or what are you going to say? Go ahead and say what you got to say, and then I'll bring up his record. Just tell me how many years he put he coached the Buccaneers. Okay. Well, here you're getting us derailed here, so I'm going to have to to set the tone here. Okay. So here we are. He came to Tampa Bay. For those that don't know, I'm going to give a quick background into his. Breakdown here. Okay, so here's Tony Dungy, obviously since retired. He started as a – he was a player, for those that don't know. So he was a player for the Steel Curtain, played for Correct. the 40, for, uh, 49ers for a year, played for the Giants. So he's got that Chuck Knoll influence, uh, the four championships in the 70s. He didn't win four. He played a couple. Uh, I believe he won uh, – as a player, he won one Super Bowl. So he won one of the four. So he was a defensive back. Then he went to become a coach in college at Minnesota, defensive back coach. He also coached for the Steelers for three years, uh, actually more than that. Then he coached as a D coordinator for the Steelers. He was promoted, Chiefs, Minnesota. And then after Minnesota defensive coordinator, he then got 
promoted, hired to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've got the schedule right here. 96, he turned around the Buccaneers, who had a horrific franchise before that. He was 6-10. and 10. The second year, they changed jerseys, 10-6, and six, went to the playoffs, won a game, lost to the Packers second round, 98-8-8. Eight eight. Next year, 99, 11-5, 10-6, and six, then 9-7, then 9-7, and seven. Nine and seven, they lost to the Eagles, stomped, fired. That answers your, your question, and then I'll d- jump into the indie part. But go ahead, Cam. No, but th- this here here it is. Fifty four to forty two to answer your question in Tampa Bay. He's in Tampa for all those years with right. that loaded defense: Sap, right. Brooks, Barber, right. Lynch, on and on. Hall of Famers. Right, Derek Brooks, defensive player of the year. Warren Sapp could have been defensive, was defensive player of the year. Could have been multiple times. Absolutely. Never won a thing. Reached the NFC Championship game and scored six points. Um, that's one. He leaves the Buccaneers and goes to the Colts. John Gruden comes in. You guys give up two first and two second round picks for the young John Gruden to elevate your offense. His first year, <coughs> the Buccaneers win the Super Bowl. The first year, Dungy's gone. With John Gruden, correct. John Gruden, correct. Yep. He then goes to Indianapolis. Right. And has Peyton Manning, yep. Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Edgerin James, Dallas Clark, on and on and on. All these great players. He wins once. And they under and, and they lost. They were one and done so many times. That I think they lost that. You, you, when you you agree with me in the old format before we went to the seventeen format of this year, if your home divisional weekend meaning you had a first round bye, you're a prohibited favorite nine times out of ten. Correct. Right. I believe he lost that game four or five times. Well, many of those years they were playing in Philadelphia. Correct. But. Uh, but but to get back to on task here, so they're 54 and 42, which is great. Again, besides the first year, 10, 8, 11, 10, and 9. So to be fair to Tony Dungy, I'm not the biggest Tony Dungy fan because you, you brought up a lot of good points that he should have won a championship with, with the 99 Buccaneers when they lost 11 to 6. That should have been he should have been able to get 12 points. And, and get to the Pacific. Super Bowl, and they would have won. But they lost to the Super Bowl champions, eventual Super Bowl champion, St. Louis Rams at the time with Kurt Warner. They lost 11-6, uh, 11 to 6, which is dreadful. And uh, But then he goes to the Colts, as you pointed out. First year, they win 10 wins, then 12-12, 14-12, Super Bowl, 13-12. and 12. So to be fair, those, New, those indie years were very comparable to New England-type years. For regular season, not postseason. I'm saying regular season, similar to New England, as far as very comparable in Indy. Would you agree with that or disagree? No, I would agree. I would agree. The regular but, season first days, they were very comparable. Absolutely. So Tony Dungy, and, and for those that don't know, and I saw a lot of chats about, oh, you know, Herm Edwards and so forth coming in the, in the chat. Herm Edwards was the strict disciplinarian back when he was in Tampa. So Tony Dungy is very soft-spoken. T- typically disciplined coach, more calmer, not a Bruce Arians, not a John Gruden, not a big and bold and loud. He's more, very calm, more disciplined. So the team was more calm and more level in regular season. But the problem, but Tony Dungy's biggest flaw was postseason. The one year they did win in Indy with, again, the guys you mentioned, Peyton Manning, uh, Marvin Harris, Reggie Wayne, Dwight Freeney, on and on and on. They did win one title. So I would agree with you. I, I I think it's a little harsh to call him the most overrated coach of the last 20 years because he did win a Super Bowl. He did turn the ship around in Tampa Bay, and he did turn the ship around in Indy. Now, granted, his teams were stacked in both places, but at the end of the day, he's winning 12 games every year. Now, do you consider him an innovator because he invented the Tampa 2? He, didn't, he, did, he was not an innovator, no. He did not invent the Tampa 2. Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, who is with Nebraska and was the inventor of the Tampa 2. He gets credit for the Tampa 2 because it was under his watch, but Monty Kiffin was the D coordinator. And then Monty Kiffin was fired John Gruden's last year uh, because the Buccaneers started off 9 and 3. 9 and 3. And you know where I'm going. We lost the last four in 2000 when he got fired. We lost the last four games. He got fired. Uh, the defensive coordinator, Monty Kiffin, was not dialed in. He took a he took a job with his son, Lane Kiffin, at USC, and was not the defensive coordinator was not dialed in, and nobody was 
dialed in and John Gruden blew it. So yeah, that is that is the case with that situation. So you're going to get a lot of heat. There's going to be a lot of thumbs down, Cam. Uh, looks like you're uh, looks like you're up in the ante. It looks like you're not you're not afraid of the heat. Is that right? No, no, I'm not. Bring it on. He's not a Hall of Famer. The fact he's in a Hall of Fame is a joke. He's not a Hall of Fame coach. Wow. He so wow, Cam. This is so. I, I don't even know how to. What, so you so okay. Wow. I don't even know what to say honestly. So he's not a Hall of Famer according to you, and he's not a good coach according to you. Not he's no, not he, a great coach. No, no, no. He was a good coach. Overrated doesn't mean you suck. It's just that he is viewed as up there with Belichick and Coughlin and Reed in terms of these great coaches of the last twenty years, and he's just not in that class, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I would not put, I wouldn't put anybody up there with Bill Belichick. I would agree that you know, but but let's. So Andy Reid is up there. Tom Coughlin is up there, right? Correct. Pete Carroll's up there, right? I would agree. Yep. Okay, so Pete Carroll has one Super Bowl win. Mm Hmm. Uh, Mike Tomlin has one Super Bowl win. Um, Andy Reid's got one Super Bowl win. So, right. I, so the people watching this that are going to say thumbs down because I know it's coming. So I'm not even going to say like that. I'll just say subscribe. Uh, I won't say like. I would like them to like, but they're going to they're going to thumbs down it because there's going to be a lot of Tony Dungy fans that are going to be coming for you. They're going to say, this is their words. They're going to say, uh, Andy Reid won one. Andy Reid won one. He won one. They so would, what do you? And, what's your response to that? Andy Reid's been to two Super Bowls. Mike Tomlin's been to two Super Bowls, and Pete Carroll's been to two Super Bowls. But he, he won one. I believe Tony Dungy has been to two Super Bowls. Was he? No, it he was lost Jim. Lost to the Saints. No, that he was lost Jim, to the Saints. It was Jim Caldwell? Or was it? Yes, it was. Let's take was a look. Year. That was the year that they were fourteen and zero, and they and Jim Caldwell benched Peyton Manning in Week Sixteen. Remember that? I'm looking at the Colts here: lost to the Jets, wild card, lost to the Patriots, lost to the Patriots, uh, back to back, lost to the Steelers, won the Super Bowl, lost to San Diego, lost to San Diego. So yeah, you could be right, one and only. But here's what I, here's what I wanted to bring up here specifically with Brady. I had it here, and then uh, screen refreshed on me here. So let me just bring this up here. So. Overall, Tom Brady is 15 and four against the Colts, including the playoffs during the Dungy era. Right? 15 and four. Yeah, correct. Including including two and one of the postseason. So uh, I'm not going to say, you know, I have a lot of respect for Tony Dungy. I I don't, there's a lot of hate there. Uh, Obviously, you're not going to get a Christmas card uh, from Tony Dungy, it's fair to say, right? No, no, I'm not. And you don't want one. So you get really so, but but my the pushback to that because when when you make such a strong statement, there's going to be pushback. Um, I think the most overrated coach, uh, Jim Harbaugh's name comes to mind. He hasn't won a single Super Bowl. He's been ex- and he's been exposed every year at Michigan, correct? And at Michigan, he's done. I know a lot of people are like you know Michigan is not. I hate to say I'm going to say it. Michigan's not Ohio State since we're pissing off everybody. They're not Ohio State. They're not. They're not LSU, Florida. They're not. Um, he's got a lot of juice. He's got a lot of flair, but he hasn't won. So, uh, but, but yeah, having said that, and to go back to John Gruden, John Gruden's, what was so great about that team that a lot of people missed is John Gruden has a lot of energy, has a lot of fire. His teams turn to come out strong, nine and three, eight and two out of the gate, you know, 10 and two. And then down the stretch, his personality wears on you. It wears on you. So you put no stock. And a guy like Tony Dungy, who's very resolute, very presidential, very calm and composed, that means nothing to you. No, it does. No, I'm not telling you. No, Tony Dungy was a good coach. But not great. Not great. So you're saying that he won a Super Bowl because the Peyton Manning group was stacked to the gills. It was a loaded team, and that was the one year he had a defense. Correct. Wow. And they had a reliable kicker in Vinatieri after all those years of Vanderjack blowing it. Wow. Man, well, like and subscribe in the channel. Cam, what's your uh, Twitter? You want to give that Twitter out because the, the hate's coming. You ready for it? You want to give it out or do you want to just uh, hope I don't put it in the thread here? Bring it on, Colts fans, at Cam and Taunton. Wow. I don't. Th- I think it's going to be Colts fans, and I think it's also going to be uh, – is it just uh, in the Tony Dungy fans as well? But all right, like and subscribe to the channel, and I look, for- I look forward to the feedback from this, this show, Cam. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. See you. See you.